Hello everyone, this is a problem practice section for regressions. Okay, so in this session, uh, we're going to practice some regression examples with various uh, machine learning methods, especially uh, what you have already uh, looked at, which is um, Lewis and polynomial regression and spline. Okay, let's move to the uh, real <clears throat> actual practice. Okay, here. Okay, so the, in this session, we wanna use the you know the actual actual data that uh, I believe you can download you know the data I prepared from the course website. Uh, okay, so please run this uh, R Studio the same folder with that data or or by using the you know or you can change the, you know, the working directory uh the command that to check you know the current working directory is get working directory function uh this function so if you type this one then you can see the your path of the you know the current working directory then using this set wd function and here you can provide you know, the, any uh working directory uh, you want, then then you can change the you know the working directory. So uh, please change your working directory with the uh, with to the folder with the you know the that downloaded the data. So by using the you know, dir dir function, so oops, here, so you can list all of the you know, the files uh, in the current you know the working directory. So here. That is a, a lot of in the PowerPoint, but the data set we're gonna use is this one. So data set salary, okay? So we're gonna use this data. So uh, before you move further, please check whether you can see the you know this text file or data file uh, from your folder. Okay, so uh, the way to read this data file is. Uh, we can use the read a table function, and from this read a table function, you can provide the name of this um, uh, data set text file. In MOOC. so if you press tab, uh, you can see the, the all of the list that start with the KMOOC. and here you can just select this one, this one. Or definitely you can you know, just type it, and and because you know the it has this uh, data set has uh, you know the, the header uh, column names uh, on its first row, so in order to uh, mark that we use you know the header options. Okay, then then this is everything. Then please um, say the read data read data. To the data variable. Yes. Uh, there's you know, some warning message, but let's see you know, what happens. So the data one to ten. Okay, so there's not that much, not a big problem. Okay, so here data. So the this data has you know, two Two fields. First field is age. The other field is a salary. So here we are gonna see the relation between you know, the age and salary. Then you know, how many data we have. In order to see that, we check the you know, data dimension using DIM function. Then if we check it, we have in total three thousand data. Um. Okay. So this is the data given. Uh, but uh, you're gonna see the later in the later session. Uh, whenever you know the, we try to do this supervised learn, learning, we have to separate training and you know test sets. Okay, so uh, we we gonna divide this data into you know, two uh, two separated sets, non-overlap data sets, data train, and let's assume that data train is a data. So first, 2,000 data sets, okay? then data test is the, the leftover, and which is from 2,001 uh, to 3,000. Okay? 
So we have two data sets, a data train and data test. So we're going to fit our model with this data train and we're going to evaluate its performance with this data test. Uh, all right. So uh, first is a Lewis, uh, local regressions. So Lewis, so simply, uh, Lewis can be uh, obtained by Lewis function. Lewis function. So let's see the help Lewis. Okay, so this is a local polynomial regression fitting. So Lewis and it's blah blah blah. There's a lot of options, but most of them we do not have to you know to worry about. We just use you know the, uh, we can just use you know the default function, uh, default options. So uh, let's say that they fit the value as you know the f dot lx, then use the Lewis, then first argument of this Lewis is a formula. Here, the formula is we want regress salary with age. Okay. Okay. Then data is also data, data trade. All right. Then, okay. Here it is. That's everything. So it is already done. And S is. So, uh, so it's uh, you know the it shows you know some uh, uh fitted result, but uh, we don't have to worry about you know, the detailed stuff. Uh, okay, so it's already done here, but here we are interested in what's the you know the how this data looks like. So you know today let's plot on uh, age, get a plot between age and the salary. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. So this is should be data, data jump train. So we're gonna see the age in the data train, and also we're gonna compare with this one with the data train um, salary. Then the plot data is like this. So this is a scatter plot. So this is age, and the y-axis is the salary. So here, you, as you can you can see, this data is uh, if this is age increase, the salary is seem to be uh, also increased. But uh, after certain uh, age, so people start to retire, then their salary is start to you know, reduce. Okay, so that's the that is actual actual patterns. Then 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 here we want to see you know the, how this the Louis actually fit this data with you know, the something smooth line. Um, in order to do that, in order to do that, we have to see, uh, we have to see, uh, draw, you know, the fitted line with, uh, on top of this, you know, the scatter plot, this scatter plot. Then, you know, how we can calculate the fitted one? Uh, fitted one is already calculated by FLS of fitted here. Then, so this is the first hand value that is a fitted, uh, fitted one. Further, um, further you know, the first 10 salaries. So first 10 salary is train of the salary. So this is you know, the observed value. So the first 10 observed value it can be seen by, seen by data dot train. Then uh, we want to show you the salary field, okay, like this. So the the actual observed values are 75 and 70, something like that, but actually their fitted value is something like this. Okay, so what you need to do is we just you know, plot, plot this you know, fitted line on top of this one, this scatter plot. But uh, so in order to do that, we have to use a line, but that line should be started from the, you know, the smallest x value. To the, you know, the largest x value. So we first measure the order of the x values. So here the x is the age, so data train of age. So we measure the order. In this order function, we measure the, you know, the order of the, you know, the each values, each element of the age. 
then here if we put the you know the print at age with o okay so this o is you know the order so if we you know the index by this o then we can see the you know the sorted age so here if we see the, you know, the first 10 values of this you know, sorted age then it starts from the, you know, the smallest one to the last one okay this is order so according to this order we also sort this salary then if we you know the in the, the train of the salary o then it is you know, the corresponding salary of this of you know the you know you know the these values okay uh, all right here here so in order to you know, the draw a line we use lines lines and in these lines the x value is data dot train at h this is you know the x x the y value is we want to draw is a fitted value which is f dot s e l s of fitted o okay. then we want to make a line um line and the make line color as a um, red the color number two is red and lwd is in the line width and we want width in the little bit thick line line so if we draw it okay it looks like it shows you know, something like this line so this red line is is a uh, you know the fitted one okay and this scatter plot is in the row value so this red line is from the lowest fitting. Uh, definitely, so the we can, you know, the uh, uh, throughout this step, we can draw a line, but to for the, you know, the convenient to use, we can make it as a uh, as a, you know the function. Then, then, then we can use it more more easily. So here, I actually provide the function here. So the function is looks like this one. So plot fitted. Plot fitted is a function that actually makes it to x and y and y hat. Y is the actual value and y hat is a fitted one. Okay? So here we just plot x and y. Then by making order of x, then we draw a line with y, x, and y hat. Okay? So if we just copy and paste here, then we can define this plot fitted one. So here, okay. So here, by putting plot fitted, okay. By by plot fitted, then say data dot train dot age and data dot train dot salary and fit here. The fitted one is f dot l s of fitted this is the fitted value then then we can see the, you know the same same uh plus uh okay so uh in so here uh we get we got this one uh we get the, you know, the fitted value of the y from this you know the uh fls which is a more which, which is you know, the variable that represents a model but in generally, in general, uh, we can calculate the the fitted value for any x using the prediction function. So, for example, y train that predict y train that l s. This is l s, right? Lewis function. Uh, here. Uh, Lewis. Okay. So anyway, uh, if we use uh, the you know the let's use uh, the l s or the whatever. Uh, Lewis function. Then, uh, if we use a predict here, then f dot ls, then comma, then provide new data as a you know, the data train. Then, then we can have y dot train. Y train dot ls is uh, you know, the fitted value of this you know, the data train. Okay, so it should be same with the f.ls of 
LS 50. Okay. So this function is useful because when you provide the really new data, for example, we have a new data of the trades or test set. Okay. If we provide the test set, predict test f dot ls. So you, our new data is then data dot test. Then this is the test. Okay. Similarly, uh, we can do you know, the, all of these steps. Uh, if we make you know, such a um, uh, such a code already, then then we can use you know, the by just to the copy and paste. Okay, here we use le uh, instead of ls, but there's no difference. Then we can get you know, the fit the value of the you know, training set and fit the value of the uh, test set. Uh, similarly, uh, here you know, what you're interested in you know the root mean square error. How much? Is you know the fit the value actually actually you know the, the fit this uh whole observed values well okay so in order to calculate it we want to calculate the uh, root mean square error which is so simply calculated by y train dot le this is a bit the value minus is a uh, observed value and square and mean of this square and the square root of that is this one okay that is uh, the RMSC of the training set. Sim similarly, we can calculate the RMSC of the test set. So, we can copy and paste like this. So, let's see RMSC of the train and ME. Value is 39.17 something something something. Then, how about test? It's a 41 by something something something. So the it has you know the larger uh, MSE for the test set, which is you know the uh, expected because our model is fitted from the training set. So that's why the training set should have the low errors. Then test set is a you know, new data, so that definitely you know, the obviously it should have you know, the larger data and um, uh, larger errors. So this is about the Lewis, right? Uh, okay. Then, then, then let's move to the, the polynomial regressions. Uh, polynomial regression can be um, modeled can be modeled by such a, uh, such a, you know the functions. So. The type is your F F L. This model is linear regression. So basically, so if you recall the you know, the polynomial regression, it's a basically linear regression, but it uses the higher order terms. So, so our model is salary is model, but it is modeled by polynomial combination of age. Then here we want we want to use up to this order, okay? And here let's use the rule is true. So it doesn't matter. So by default, the row is false, but here we're gonna use a row equal to true. Uh, fundamentally, it doesn't make any difference. But you know, the in terms of you know the, some uh, beauty or you know the convenience. So the row equal to false is better, but actually it doesn't matter. So if you want to check see the uh, the exact role of this row, please refer the. Uh, have a message, but here let's assume to use you know, the row equal to true. Then we specify data is data dot tray. Okay, then that's everything. So FPL, this is the FPL. So it is like this. So our interceptor term is like this, and uh, polynomial one. This is uh, the first order has uh, this coefficient, and second order has uh, this coefficient, and blah blah blah. Because this is uh, just a linear model, we can summary. Uh, f dot pl. Then throughout this one, we can see the you know the all of the you know, statistical tests, the all of the coefficients. But um, I don't know. So the they they have you know, the very low, nothing actually significant, nothing actually significant. Because you know the if you see the you know, data set itself, you see that it's not they are not that fitted well. So that's why they have you know, the very uh, insignificant p value for all of the you know, this. Uh, uh, high order variables, and 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 similarly, we can 
uh, predict uh, train uh, we can predict you know the big values for example why the train dot pl is a predicted value you uh, from this uh, the app dot pl model which is predicted by which uh, this y train dot pl is you know, the estimated y value from this you know, the y train data okay similarly we can calculate you know, the predicted value of test set using this you know, the test data in data test okay yeah. We can also calculate the IMSE in a similar way. Okay. Then uh, let's plot it. Plot. So okay, it looks like this, but it is a little bit um, it is a little bit different. Okay. Uh, it is a little bit different, but it shows you also very show well smoothed the day, day, well smoothed the day data. Okay. Uh, here, so the actually the the how much you know the we fit this you know, from the data that part is controlled by you know, the, this order order of the you know the polynomial. So if we use you know, the only first order term, let's let's do it, this one. Okay. If we only use the first one. It shows you know, just a linear line, okay? but if we use you know, the tenth order like this, which is you know, very wiggly, then it shows you know, somewhat wiggly terms like like this. So this is you know the you know the the kind of the art find out you know, the right degree. Uh, then you know how can you find out the right degree? That's you know the uh, problem of the, the mod model selection. Which we gonna discuss later. Okay, so let's here let's use the five. five. Alright. Then next is spline. Uh, this you know the uh, linear model or Lewis, they are all provided by you know the uh, basic library. So uh, you don't have to use you know the, any. Uh, additional library. However, this spline function requires you know, the special library you need to install separately. So you need to do first install package and install package button to install this spline library. Okay. Then if you type this one, okay, so there's you know, a lot of error because I guess you know the my one is not connected to the my computer is not connected to the uh, internet, but uh, I already downloaded it, so there's no problem. So here I'm gonna just so let's assume that you download successfully. Then let's use uh, using the library function. Let's use splice. Then 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 we can use splice. Uh, before we uh, brought, if you record this spline, so they have you know, some cutoff uh, cut points. So we have to first specify the cutoff point. So in order to specify the cutoff point, we're going to use a quantile function. Quantile function provides you know, the actual point that actually pro that corresponding to the you know, certain quantile. For example, among the eight quantile, Data frame at age, and if you use 0.5, 0.5 will use the medium point. So that is a 42. So the, if we you know, the order the data train of the uh, age of the data train from minimum to the, you know, the, the maximum, then what will be in the you know the 50 point? What is the what is just in the middle or the median point? That is a 42. That quantile actually provides you know, the such a value. So if we here provide 0, 0 0.5, 0.5, and 0.75, and 1, it shows you know, the five numbers, which is the minimum is 18, and maximum is uh, 80. And the first 25, uh, at the, you know, the first 25 is uh, 33 and medium point is 42 and the, you know, the first 75 point is 51 it's like that. 
So uh, usually, you know, the, in the spline, the cutoff point is provided by this, you know, the quantiles. So in order to, you know, to automate it, 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 we actually use uh, this probability. Uh, here, it should be data train age. Data train age. Anyway, uh, this probability should be uh, given by in this way. And this probability is, you know, the percentiles. So here, it provided as a you know, sequence from 0 to 1 by 0 to 25, which is, this. it provides the sequence of the 0, 0 0.25, so it's the you know, same sequence with the, this one. Okay? But the cutoff point should be excluded the first and the, you know, the last one. That's why we only use the cutoff point from 2 to the length, uh, 2 to the, you know, the uh, second to the la last. So if we copy and paste this comment, cut pt is okay, sorry, cut pt is only 25, 50, and 75. Then the spline, spline is given in this way. So it also uses you know, the linear model function, but that linear model is uh, you know, combined spline. So this BS means the basic spline function. So this BS is the basic spline, then it has uh, the age function age of this you know, data and it has you know, a notch point which is provided by the cut point. Okay. So yeah, then it shows you the certain uh, these are the you know the order of the basis functions and their coefficients. Okay. So you don't have to worry about that. So okay then everything every others are all all similar. So we can calculate the fitted value of the train data set and test data set and also calculate the root mean square errors. Like this. Okay. Then if we show the, the plotted value. Okay, it is like this. Uh, if we want to make you know, the more more weekly, we can use you know the more cutoff point like this. Then we're gonna use you know the nine cutoff point. And if we do this one. Okay, it shows you the more wiggly because you know the it actually fit this uh, data using you know the you know the ten bits. Because, you know the, this cutoff point, cut points are cut points are you know, the, like this. This is the fine fine bits. But here, let's use uh, only you know the four four bits. Uh, okay, summary. Here, uh, let's summarize. So the, up to now, we have looked at the three methods, uh, Lewis, polynomial regression, and spline. Then let's summarize their errors as one matrix, like this. So this rmse.net. Okay, so first one is Lewis, and second one is, you know, the, for the polynomial, and third one is the spline. And First row is the error of the training set. Second row is uh, the error of the test set. They are all similar to each other. And in order to compare their performance, we can use the bar plot. And before we use the bar plot, let's make a name of the, those metrics using column names. Then rmse.mat has uh, the column names like this. Then by using the bar plot, if we compare this one, it's, it's very similar to each, each other. Uh, all right. Uh, here are the, you know, the short questions. So please control uh, in this in you know, the polynomial re regression. Please you know the control the you know the orders, and please find out you know, the what's the order that actually provides you know, the smallest uh, test error. Test error. That means uh, please find out you know the certain you know the proper order that actually you know, the provided you know, the smallest this test error in this set, set setting. So this is you know, the, the very quick um, good practice example that you can try by yourself. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna stop it here. Okay, so I'm gonna stop it here and thank you very much.